Welcome back to the story of Liberty. This is John Bowman. Remember the name Johnny Appleseed? His real name was John Chapman, and he was an American pioneer. He was a nurseryman who introduced apple trees to large parts of Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois, including the northern counties of the present-day West Virginia. Johnny Appleseed became an American legend while still alive. Due to his kind and generous ways, his leadership, he just loved to plant apples. Johnny Appleseed was also a Christian missionary. Johnny Appleseed's father, Nathaniel, was a Minuteman who fought the British at Concord in 1775. Johnny Appleseed collected seeds from the apple cider presses in western Pennsylvania, and he planted nurseries from the Alleghenies to central Ohio, giving thousands of seedlings to westward-bound pioneers. He lived at harmony with the Indians. Many of the Indians were his friends, and he brought them medicinal plants. During the War of 1812, Johnny Appleseed heard the British had incited an Indian attack, so he ran 30 miles from Mansfield, Ohio to Mount Vernon to warn the settlers. That's longer than a marathon race, isn't it? Barefoot and wearing a mush pan over his long hair and an old coffee sack on his shoulders, Johnny Appleseed had in unconventional and unique devotion to God's creation and the Holy Scriptures. He called an apple blossom a living sermon from God and often quoted the Sermon on the Mount. Johnny Appleseed also had a business plan. We always see the image of Johnny Appleseed spreading apple seeds randomly wherever he went. But in fact, he planted nurseries rather than orchards. He built fences around them to protect them from the livestock. He left the nurseries in the care of a neighbor who sold the trees. And he returned every year or two to tend to the nursery he planted. Although apples grown from seed are rarely sweet or tasty, apple orchards with sour apples were popular among the settlers because apples were mainly used for producing hard cider and applejack. In some of the settlements in the Midwest, the owners of property planted orchards of apples and pears in order to uphold the right they claimed to the land. So Johnny Appleseed planted orchards on good real estate on the frontier. Johnny Appleseed had a subsistence lifestyle. Toward the end of his career, he was present when a missionary was giving an open-air congregation a message in Mansfield, Ohio. The sermon was good. It was on the topic of extravagance. And because the pioneers were buying indulgences at the time, such as imported tea, and the preacher then said, where now is the man who, like the primitive Christians, is traveling to heaven barefooted and clad in coarse raiment? The preacher repeated this again until Johnny Appleseed walked up to the preacher, put his bare foot on the stump 
that had served as the podium and said, here's your primitive Christian. The pastor dismissed the congregation. Poet William Henry Venable wrote, Remember Johnny Appleseed, all ye who love the apple. He served his kind by word and deed in God's grand Greenwood Chapel. When Johnny Appleseed was 70 years old, he visited a friend, William Worth, one evening. He ate some bread and had milk, and he read out loud from the Holy Scriptures. He lay down on the floor and went to sleep, and he never woke up. Johnny Appleseed went to heaven. So was the unique life of Johnny Appleseed. The Lord is good to me, and so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need. With the sun and rain and an apple seed, yes, He's been good to me. I owe the Lord so much for everything I see. I'm certain if it weren't for Him, there'd be no apples on this limb. He's been good to me. Oh, here am I neath the blue, blue sky, doing as I please, singing with my feathered friends, soaring with the bees. I wake up every day as happy as can be, because I know that with his care, my apple trees, they will still be there, oh, the Lord is good. 